Hey everyone, this is Franco with Wizify, and today we're going to be talking about how you can make a currency converter in Excel in just a few minutes. Now, this is going to be really, really useful when you have to translate between different currencies. Maybe you work in a bank, or maybe you work in a multinational corporation that has to deal with subsidiaries and affiliates from different countries. Either way, this is going to help you minimize the time you spend manually converting those currencies, right? Because that computation, once you do it every time that you're dealing with numbers, it can add valuable seconds to each of your inputs. And those seconds add up, right? I'm going to help you save that time. If you're looking at my screen right now, you should be able to see my Excel file. I have here exchange rates and my functional currency converter. How does this work? Normally, if you want to convert an amount, let's say 500,000 pesos, I have to go to my exchange rates and I have to look for conversion from Philippine peso to Japanese yen. So that's it in row six. And I have to manually multiply this to the amount. It's really easy if you only have to do it once, but if you have to do this over and over again, well, that's pretty hard. Especially if this is something that you do on a daily basis, it might wear out your soul to save you from that, I want you to take a look at my currency converter. So what this does is it automatically changes the amount based on the currencies that you want to translate. So let's say that I want to translate 600,000 Philippine pesos. Automatically, I have the amount in Japanese yen. If I change my mind, let's say, for example, that I want to go with a Chinese supplier instead. There you go. I already have the amount and I can record this immediately. All right. So I have a few currencies here. I can also choose USD. And again, the conversion type changes and the amount here changes as well. So that's really dynamic and it's really quick. Hopefully it saves you a lot of time. Now I know the question that you have in your head right now. It seems cool, but how do I make it? I'm going to guide you through that. Let's get away from the formatting for now. I'm going to show you the functions that you need to make this work. So I'm going to delete everything over here, even the data validations. So I'm going to clear these data validations. Let's pretend that we're starting from scratch. So let's say you have the format that you want down. I'm not going to get into that because this format is really bare bones. I know that you can do something even greater than this. Right. But the first step that you need to make your currency converter is of course, you have to have your table of exchange rates. We have that over here and normally you're going to get the conversion type and the rate in target currency. This is all you need. But if you don't have that, maybe you'll get the currency from and currency to columns and you don't have the conversion type. To make the conversion type, which we will really need later on as our key when we're looking up values to multiply, is the concat function, right? Again, you need the conversion type because this will be your basis for which rate here to multiply to the amount that you have. And to make this conversion type, we need the concat function. So the concat function saves you from basically doing this. If you want to make the conversion type, you might think, oh, okay, that's easy. I just need to type it in one by one, right? But this can get really tiring, even if you have flash fill here. So control E will automatically fill this down for me. But the moment that I have a new currency that I need to deal with, let's say Europe, uh, the Euro, I mean, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> so you have the Euro. Now, as you can see, I need to flash fill this down again. Every time that I need to add one, See, now flash fill didn't even work for me. So I might be tempted to say, okay, I'm just going to put this in manually. And that eats up a lot of your time. Imagine how many minutes we just spent talking on this. <laughs> so what you can do here is we can use the concat function. Let's say that we don't have this data here yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press equals and put in concat, press tab. So what concat does is you can reference text or any kind of data in certain cells, if you want that to be the number, 
and you want to combine that with the currency too. That's basically what it does. It merges data together. So this isn't actually what I want. What I want is the currency from, and I want a slash in between that. So anytime that you want to put manual entries or specified text, you have to put that into quotation marks. So you can even add whole strings of text here. So I want to put in, I want to put in space to space. And then I want that to combine with the data on column B. So as you can see, that works really well, but I don't want that. I actually just want slashes. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is just replace all of that with a slash and copy this down. Now I have my conversion type. So that's one function that we used. Again, that was concat. Now, if I go back to my currency converter, I actually have everything that I need to make this work. I just need the formulas. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to add data validation to make sure that users can choose the currency that they want to convert to and from. You don't want to have a situation where people can just input everything that they want, right? Peso, or they can put numbers here. They can even put dates if they wanted. Now you want to limit them to be able to choose only the currency that you have in your table. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to click on the data tab and I'm going to click on data validation. Of course, you have to highlight the cells that you want to apply the data validation to first. So right now it's on any value. I'm going to change this to list and no, I don't want you to type this down manually. You don't want to go USD PHP, right? That's going to make the list static and that's not what we want. We actually want a dynamic list. So we click on that button there and go back to our exchange rates and we have to highlight the currency that we have. Now here's a problem. If we're using that for data validation, it's not going to be dynamic anyways, because first we're just referencing a range of cells. So how do we make that dynamic so that if I add another currency, the list will continue to pick that up. The first thing that you want to do is turn this into a table, control A, control T. There we go. And you're not going to be able to use this outright. So in formulas, you will be able to, as you can see, I'm typing a formula in here. And once I highlight this whole column, it already has a name. But if you try that with your data validation, so let's go back here to data validation and click list. Once I select that list, it's still the static range. So what do I do to fix this? One thing that I want to do is highlight this column, which is already a named range in itself, but I just want to give it a nickname so that Excel can actually use that with data validation. So I go here to my formulas tab and I click define name. Now I want to name it something like curve from something shorter, right? Now I have a named range and I'm going to use that for my data validation. So again, we highlight the cells we want to apply the validation to. We click on data validation and we click on list. Now, once we go back to that, we don't actually have to highlight this whole table or this whole column. We can just put the name that we've put in. So curve from, and that is going to solve our problem here. Now, once we open this up, as you can see, the currencies that we need are here. If ever we add new currencies like Euro or, you know what, let's just make stuff up ABC. DEF, they're all going to show up in the list dynamically. So that's something really cool that you should explore. Again, this is using tables and named ranges along with data validation. Now, the thing that you want to do here is once I choose a currency, so I want to translate from Philippine peso to Japanese yen, I want to put an amount here, let's say 500,000 Philippine pesos. And I want the amount or the converted version to show up here in cell D7 automatically. Now to do that, what do you usually have to do, right? You have to multiply. So I'm just going to map out the formulas for you. You want to multiply your amount by your appropriate rate. 
right? But how do you know which rate to multiply? So if you go back to your exchange rates, you have a set of rates here and you have to dynamically be able to choose which rate depending on our currency converter, right? So how do we do that? The first function that comes to mind is actually VLOOKUP and VLOOKUP will help you find a key here. So by key, we mean a set of data that is a set of data that's available in two separate areas, right? So we have it in this table here and we have it in our currency converter. But the thing is, VLOOKUP only works with one data set. And what I mean by that is you can't look at USD and then afterwards look at PHP, right? You might be able to using nested functions, but that's not going to take just a few minutes, right? So to cut down that time, that's why we created the conversion type. And we have to create that conversion type in our currency converter as well. So we just use the same function, concat. We select this cell, add a slash, and select this cell. Now we have the conversion type, and we can actually use this to look up. So if you want to find the rate, you're going to do something like VLOOKUP. You want to look up this conversion type, and you want to go into your table array. Always put the data that you're looking for in the first column. And then we just want our rate and target currency. So there's no use in extending beyond this. Now, I wanted to return the second column, which is rate and target currency. So I press two and then I press zero because I want an exact match, right? Now, as you can see, do I have the correct rate? If we're translating from Philippine peso to Japanese yen, there you go. I have 0 0.385 which is what I got. It's the correct amount. And all we need to do is multiply this to our amount over here. So this multiplied by the rate over here will give us our answer. But we don't want this to be hanging, right? We don't want a random number to be up there. So what we're going to do is we can actually take this VLOOKUP and we can incorporate that into our formula directly. And there you go. Now, every time I change this, this cell will change as well. If I change the amount, as you can see, I don't need to do any computations on my end. The conversion is done for me, right? So when you do this on your own, definitely, if you know the steps that we took, it'll only take you a few minutes to finish this. So. What functions did we use in today's video? We actually used Colcat and then we also used VLOOKUP, right? So we use Colcat, we use VLOOKUP, other things that you can explore. The formatting here isn't actually automatic. So we use conditional formatting there. We used a rule that says, if this cell is USD, then we have to format this as a US dollar accounting format, right? And we did the same down here. If this cell is JPY, we do this in JPY accounting form. So that's using conditional formatting. And finally, an inconvenience that you might face is having to change the exchange rates here constantly, given that these are static, right? Exchange rates fluctuate all the time. So how do you make this dynamic? One thing that I'm going to show you we're not really going to get into the nitty gritty of it, but I just want to show you that with a trusted API, so you can find a site that hosts exchange rates in real time and connect to their API. And if you have a macro for it, you can actually update this in real time. So now, as you can see, these are updated and I can just plug them into my currency converter. So that is it for our video today. I hope this helped you out a lot. So again, this is Franco from Wisdify, and together we went over how to make a really time-saving currency converter in Excel in just a few minutes. I hope this is something that you can use. Have a great day.